Hi, today I'm going to show you how I built a custom winch bumper for my 2002 Ford F-150. I hope this helps someone out. Funding for this project was provided by the Invention Studio at Georgia Tech Student Organization, and the project was built in the Flowers Invention Studio space. I'd like to extend a massive thank you to the Flowers Invention Studio and Georgia Tech for helping me with this task, and also to Georgia Tech's Montgomery Machining Mall for their guidance and allowing me to use their tools as well. My original inspiration for this project came from when I visited the JCR Off-Road, or Victory 4x4 for you Toyota folks, uh, facility in Portage, Michigan, and I was able to take a tour of their facility. Those guys have been making off-road parts for Jeeps and Toyotas for over 20 years and have some really cool equipment. But looking at their process, I figured I would love to try my hand at building my own bumper using the tools that are available to me through the Flowers Invention Studio. What I learned? There's a good reason why aftermarket bumpers cost anywhere from about $600 to $2,000, and it is not just the materials. On the design side, I was able to leverage the mechanical engineering curriculum taught at Georgia Tech, especially the concepts from ME4042, the CAD FBA class, along with statics, def bods, and machine design. My primary objectives with the bumper were to, one, create a more robust crash structure at the front of the truck that would distribute more load across both frame rails of the vehicle and reduce deformation and cabin intrusion in the event of a partial overlap crash, such as the one shown here. Two, add mounting points for standard sized metal shackles for safe vehicle recovery. Three, add a place to install a 12,000 pound rated electric winch for self recovery. Four, incorporate a front hitch receiver to allow the truck to maneuver trailers easier and install hitch accessories on the front of the vehicle. And finally, five, to be light enough that it can be installed by one person without the need for expensive equipment. This last one was achieved by splitting the bumper into a total of five subcomponents to distribute the weight since I did not want to compromise on bumper strength or switch to a prohibitively expensive material such as aluminum. Following a few napkin sketches, I took off the front bumper of the truck and used the Flowers Invention Studio's Sparrow Edge 3D scanner. Massive shout out to Matthew Dick for helping me take the scan. So during winter break, I was still recovering from surgery to put my leg back together, and I had nothing better to do but to work on the CAD for the bumper project. To this end, I used Autodesk's Fusion 360 software to generate the designs, and then export it to Autodesk Inventor to perform FBA analysis. The end result? A five-part system of interconnecting parts that tie into the original bumper mounts along with frame fixturing holes from the factory, and the tow hook mounting holes. The first of these, shown here, is the winch cradle, designed with two locations to install a winch. I will be using the forward one of the two, as the rear one would likely not work out with my truck's transmission cooler. The winch cradle is hidden behind either, with significant trimming, the factory bumper, or this custom bumper section. The bumper section ties into the frame at a total of 12 points and includes D-ring shackle mounts for vehicle recovery. Flanking the bumper center section are two symmetrical bumper wings, which include tube work to protect the headlights and an open mounting location for the OEM fog light or an aftermarket LED bar or pod up to 8 inches wide. Finally, a top cross tube ties the tube work together and is removable to promote easy access to the engine bay. The winch cradle is capable of withstanding 12,000 pound pulls with a safety factor of 2, and the recovery points are also capable of withstanding 12,000 pound pulls each. This accommodates not only the recovery of the truck's gross vehicle weight if stuck, but is actually rated for just over the gross combined weight rating for this truck if I, say, got stuck while pulling a trailer. I also took the time to create a bill of materials of all the things I thought I would need to build this thing in late March of 2022 and went ahead to get my steel plate while it was on sale. 
If you're in the Atlanta area, I've got to recommend checking out Markdown Metals if you're looking for cheap steel and have a means of transporting it. I purchased two 5 by 10 foot sheets of steel and ground them down on site into four 4 by 5 foot sections and two 2 by 5 foot sections to load into a pickup truck. I also went to Sewanee Lumber to pick up a couple sheets of MDF to use for prototyping out the bumper design as the MDF comes out significantly cheaper as a light prototyping material and is also a lot easier to manipulate. To support the prototyping process, I was able to find and correct a 3D model of a Warren Zeon winch. I split the body in the 3D model in half and was able to print the model in life-size halves using the Flowers Invention Studio Ultimaker S5 3D printers. Having the winch in hand was a great way to double check clearances and make sure my winch wouldn't hit my transmission cooler. My next step was to go ahead and cut out the pieces for the winch cradle and later the bumper center section out of the MDF. I used the Flowers Invention Studio wood room to put together my MDF prototypes. Having wood glue and clamps readily available helped me knock these out quickly so I could throw them on the truck same day. Going through this process with the MDF served effectively as a dry run during which I was able to double check that my DXF exports from my Fusion 360 model were good and also make sure that there weren't any unintended consequences of my design. And indeed, I did find issues. I did have to adjust the positioning of some holes that I did not place correctly in my 3D model. Even with the 3D scan, it was very nice to be able to double check things in person. Once the fitment was finalized, I switched over to cutting the steel. The 5 by 4 foot sheets fit perfectly into the bed of the water jet. So, to get the tube work for my winch cradle right, I exported a DXF of the tube work bottom plane from my 3D model and laser cut it out of some scrap plywood. I was then able to use that as a jig to get my pieces of tube cut to the right length and fine tune the angles. I cleaned up my parts as best as possible using a combination of a grinder flap disc and the Invention Studios sandblaster. With my parts cleaned up, I finally got to start welding. I used the Invention Studios TIG welder to get these small parts welded up. This is quarter inch steel plate, but with the machine set to DC TIG and cranked up to 200 amps, I think the machine did a good job. I am by no means a pro or even good welder, but I think there was good penetration and the parts look like they came out alright and will work well in the field. With the cradle all welded up, I focused on the main center section of the bumper. I started off by finish welding in the bumper mounts on the sidewalls of the bumper section, and then followed it up with tack welding together all the large panels that give the bumper its shape. Lots of fun clamping here. Once I finished tacking together the center section of the bumper, I focused my attention on the side panels of the bumper. Tacking together panels at non-standard angles and more or less relying on the geometry of each panel to guide me on how to orient the next, like putting together a puzzle. While getting the bumper wings set up, I went ahead and prepped my tube work for the wings. To achieve this, I once again relied on the laser cutter to make little triangular jigs to use as stencils to mark out the angles I would need to notch out of my square tube to allow my square tube to bend the right amount. Once the notches were cut out on the bandsaw, I was able to roughly bend them into place. The bending will be finalized on the actual bumper wing itself. Once everything was tack welded together, I did a test fit to make sure that everything lined up. Overall, everything lined up really well, and it looks fantastic in my opinion. I did make one error in my CAD. I failed to move a hole on the wing component that I had to move on the center section. Luckily, a few minutes with a hand file sorted that out. Once a test fit was verified, I went ahead and started finish welding all of the metal parts together using the Montgomery Machining Mall's MIG welder. This really sped up the process and I want to give everyone over there a huge thanks for letting me use their equipment. I also took the center section back over to the TIG welder just to see if I could fuse together the leading edges of the individual quarter inch cutouts to make a single monolithic piece for the toe hooks. I think this turned out okay, but maybe I could have used a little bit more filler here. 
and that's the progress made so far. It's been really exciting to watch my project come to life. My original goal was to also clean up and paint the bumper before my graduation, but I will have to do those final touches and the installation at home, so stay tuned for that at a later date. The important thing is that I was able to complete the design and fabrication of the bumper, which was possible thanks to the support of the Flowers Invention Studio. I've had a great experience there, and I'm glad I'll get a little reminder of that every time I walk up to my truck. So thank you for watching. I hope this helped you out in some way, and I'm looking forward to showing off the installed product in a future video.